Hey, what's up, people? I'm sitting here with the Jibokov Warrens, the Raven. Very fitting name, in my opinion. It has those animal characteristics, especially in the blade. Kind of has a shape like a, I don't know, bird's beak. Um, so, yeah, the Warrens. Um, one of the larger Jibokov models. And, yeah, have a couple of things to say about it. I do own it for. Um, I guess more than a year now. Um, this is not one of my users. I don't use this too much. But I have noticed a couple of things about it. And I have some other Jibokovs as well, which I'm going to show you later on. Um, so I can say a couple of things about the usability of these folders. Jibokov knives have a really high quality standard. I mean, they cost between like the Warren at least cost between like 480 and 560 ish euros, depending on the model and the type of steel and variation that you get. But yeah, the cool thing with Chebokov is that you can get quite a few variations as opposed to um, other knife makers that give you a certain model and you don't can, don't really can customize them. Um, this one you can customize from factory, so you can choose the handle material, um, you can choose the colors on the titanium, the backspace or a standoffs, and if you want them to have cutouts or no cutouts, so basically heavy or light version, um, this one is the heavy version, the one that doesn't have the milling on the inside of the handle, so it's going to be a little bit heavier. Um, but also it's gonna feel a little bit more substantial in hand um, Yeah, you can't really customize the thickness of the blade. They're all the same specs usually um, And yeah, I have seen some of these with the thumb hole and without the thumb hole Which I'm gonna tell you right off uh, right away. This thumb hole is not really that usable. It's 100% the flipper. It's not really made to be used with the thumb with the thumb hole, it kind of kind of has to do with the detent, but um, it's not really enjoyable to use with the like that. It's more, it's really more of a flipper. So, and yeah, I also have seen not only frame locks of these, but um, access locks. So there are quite a few variations on the on the Jibokov knives. Um, they have that clean Russian look. Um, this one is one of the more dramatic designs from them. Um, most Chebokov knives look very basic, I guess, in their overall um, shape, um, which is a good thing, I guess. Oh, let me switch the focus here. Um, this is the Chebokov Scout. This was my first uh, Chebokov knife. Also a flipper, also really nice. Um, and then I also have the Chebokov Strish, which is this one right here. Um, I guess Strish means um, swift. I don't know. Not completely sure on that one. Yeah, this one is as clean as it gets in terms of uh, design. Now, the Voron is, like I said, a little bit more dramatic, but it still looks very beautiful, elegant. They have this, I don't know, Chebokov knives just have a certain feel about them and um, yeah for instance that um, sand blasting on the blade um, as you can see there is a little bit of shine to it uh, I think they do hand drop the blades and then blast overneath them so it gives it a very interesting kind of look the stretch here is sand blasted as well just a little bit darker but um, very beautiful sand blasting I think one of the best that I've seen in that price range. Um, yeah, and the blades are ground super thinly. You get a lot of slicing performance with these guys. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about Russian knives is that they still uh, go for performance, for cutting performance, as opposed to, um, I don't know. A lot of American high-end knives are like thick pry bars. They're sharpened. They're ground super thick behind the edge. These are really, really thin. So we have like um, 
3.3 millimeters on the blade stock thickness and then we have 0 0.22 to 0 0.23 millimeters behind the edge which is like eight thousands consistently um, across the entire edge so very good slicing slicing capabilities from this guy right here and it has a super fine point it's super thin in the tip um, in order to show you how thin it actually is in tip I bring in the Spyderco PM2 a very common knife there's a good size comparison by the way um, now one of the main complaints about the PM2 is that a lot of people break off the tips which I did as well on my PM2 um, the PM2 tip is really thin and pointy which can be a good and a negative thing however you use your knife so in order to show you let me get that camera to focus um, this is the Voron next to the PM2 so the Voron has about two times maybe even three times three times more thinner tip than the PM2 so it's a super slicey, super, super thin point. Very precise, but also very fragile, I guess, in a way. So this is not a knife that you would take and stab into a tree stump. Um, this is not a hard user, this is a slicer. This goes for cutting performance. You have a really long cutting edge because you have such a long blade. And let me get those knives out of the way because the camera tries to focus on these. Uh, guys back here. So the blade is 11 centimeters long as you can see with my geodrag <laughs> um, Which is four four point three inches. So um, It's like 22 centimeters overall, which is 8.6 inches Yeah, the Russian knives are just different in terms of their finish. They just feel very very different different This uh, flipping action on this guy is really really hydraulic really clean um, obviously it runs on bearings um, ceramic bearings if I'm not mistaken and yeah give you a couple of close-ups this is the gray finish on the titanium you can get the Jebokov knives in the bronze gray and blue finish usually and sometimes they have milling sometimes they don't you can see also the um, the screws and standoffs are bronze anodized on the scout here and they are left stainless or silver, I should say, because this is still titanium. The screws are all titanium, and uh, yeah, um, stainless insert, stainless steel insert on the frame locks. Like I said, I have seen this as an access lock. I don't know how well the access lock from Jebokovs are. I have never tried one of those. I have just seen them, um, but never felt the urge to buy one really. Um, yeah, really, really clean, really nice action. The handle scale inlay is done like that. Um, that you have basically a flat scale and then the inlay is 3D contoured. So you can get this knife flat on both sides because this side is always flat. And you can get it with the inlay so it's 3D contoured on one side which leads to a couple of problems. It feels kind of... Um, kind of unbalanced, it's flat here and contoured here, so it feels really nice and soft and rounded here, and then more a little bit sharper and a little bit more, I don't know, harder on the other side. So, a lot of people that have tried this knife um, say that it feels kind of weird because one side is flat and one side is 3D contoured. So, yeah, I think they do really, really beautiful uh, scale inlays, but if I would buy this knife again, I probably would buy it with flat scales on both sides, so flat titanium on both sides. The carbon fiber looks really good. They have lightning strike carbon fiber and then this is, I guess, normal carbon fiber, I don't know. Um, yeah, they do all kinds of stuff. Um, and like I said, you can get tons of variations from them. Um, they use mainly bowler steels on their blades. Uh, this one is M390. You see M390 a lot with them and also the um, slutty nuts the mast is pretty pretty popular. We make a lot of these as well. 
Um, the steel performs well. It's not my favorite steel as a user, but it sharpens up nicely and it's uh, not the most stable at the edge. It's a little bit brittle if you do some harder cutting, which, which this are not really hard cutting knives. They are, like I said, they are finely ground and uh, they keep the the thinness behind the edge is really consistent, so it stays thin for a really long time. Um, I guess you can resharpen them a tons of uh, quite a quite a couple of times before they actually get thick behind the edge. But these knives feel so clean and so beautiful that you are kind of resisting um, to use these. They they don't feel like users really. Um, I have used my Chebokov Scout quite a bit. You can see some of the snail trails on the on this guy. It has a couple of scratches and worm marks. I've resharpened this a few times now. Yeah. <clears throat> beautiful knives. Really, really beautiful knives. Um the strish is more of the basic basic use of all the old this one, although this one has a really um thin line lock and a really really soft detent. I guess you can order them with a hard and a softer detent. I don't like the softer detents of Jebokovs. They almost feel too soft to me. A little bit too too easy to break them. And you can also shake them out of the handle pretty easily as you can see. The softer detents uh, are not my favorite. Um, the Scout here has a softer detent as well. Yeah, the benefit of the softer detent is that they are very drop shy, super drop shy actually. The Voron however here has a harder detent, meaning that you can't shake this knife out of the handle as you can see, can't do it. And it's not as drop shy because of that, but it's more hydraulic in the action and I like that. It feels really good, really, really, really really clean. Blade centering obviously perfect. Everything is perfect on these guys. They really they really have finished these pockets knife these pocket knives uh, extremely well. Um, come they come razor sharp out of the box. By the way this is the box. Usually you get this black standard box of the Jabokov logo that you also find on the blades here. Um, yeah, with the Viking boat and then the letter, the Cyrillic letter for Je. And inside the box, there is not a lot of things to be found except this little card here. Uh, a lot of people think this is the certificate of authenticity. This is like um, a license card. In Russia, you have different knife laws. Every knife you manufacture, you need to, um, you need to require one of these cards from the state. To, um, to legally carry, um, to have your customers legally carry the knives. Think about it like a, um, a license, like a gun license just for a knife, just for knives. So yeah, these boxes are kind of boring. I don't like them because they fall apart pretty quickly, which um, yeah, you don't want it um, for the resale value, obviously. Sometimes they come in these pouches as well, um, yeah. I like these pouches. They, I like them a lot better than the boxes. Uh, yeah, the Voron, quite a big, big, big knife. Um, triangular blade shape, so it's really similar to a lot of Spydercos. Here's the Spyderco military, um, and I suppose to a lot of Spydercos that have a lot of curvature in the edge to the. Uh, from the back, from the heel back here to the tip, the boron has a lot of straight edge, and then a little bit of belly, but more of a subtle belly, and then the super aggressive fine point. And I guess they don't have much of a swedge up here, but they uh, kind of grind a little bit on the side to make the, the top a little bit softer. So it's not crowned, but it's it's um, how do you say it? Like a chamfered, I guess. Yeah, it's chamfered. So, yeah, the jimping is not very aggressive. It could be a little bit sharper, in my opinion. Not my favorite jimping on the knife, I have to admit that. I like the Spyderco jimping much more than the Chebokov's jimping. And um, Chris Reeve does a, 
a lot better job with their jumping as well. But it's nothing to complain about too much. Um, it's just a little detail. I just, uh, not, I'm not, just not the biggest fan about this jumping. But yeah, handling on this guy, like I said, the 3D contouring and the flat on the other side feels a little bit weird, but overall, it feels good. Um, it's just not the most comfortable handle overall, I guess, in terms of, I don't know, I, I like the simpler handles, like this one. Um, these handles that have a stop in the front and in the back, they feel more more natural from my hand, I guess, to this large finger choil, which is like, how big is this finger choil? It's like three centimeters of finger choil. It's quite big. It's like, uh, I don't know, two and a half inches, I guess. Uh, quite a big finger choil. Um, yeah. Yeah, super nice slicer. So if you do a lot of food cutting and a lot of fine slicing, this guy is going to perform really, really well. As far as for the steel that you can order or usually get um, M390, like I said, pretty popular still right now. Um, LMX, WANX47, Nylox, Slotinox the Mast. These are basically the steels you're most likely to get on these guys. Um, yeah, quite a ton of performance if you want them to. But like I said, the feels are nice, they are a little bit, you kind of hesitate to use them really because they feel so nice and beautiful as opposed to a a knife in a similar price range with us, which is the Chip, um, the Chibokov, the Chris Reeves Sebenza, which really feels like a user. This is a knife that wants to be used, and yeah, I guess this is also manual as opposed to a flipper. But there's just a different feeling about this. They don't feel they feel so clean and so beautiful that I don't know, kind of hesitate to use them. I think I'll repeat myself, so I will stop the video right here. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this gave you a little bit of input on this knife. Um, yeah. Are they worth the money? Definitely worth the money. 100%. But you have to like flippers and you have to like the Jebokov style. Which there is not a lot of things that you are not going to like about the Jebokov knives. Except maybe the soft defense, I guess. And M390 is still hard steel to sharpen, so <laughs> you have to have the skills to maintain the harder steels, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. And oh, we will see each other maybe in another video. Goodbye, people.